a locked computer is a lot more difficult to break into than an unlocked computer. And today, we'll learn to use a DigiSpark to make a computer stay unlocked by creating a mouse jiggler on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. In a previous episode, we've learned to use this DigiSpark with the ATtiny microcontroller to pretend to be a keyboard and input keystrokes into a computer. But today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead, we're going to use the same microcontroller to actually move the mouse. And the most simple application of this is to build a mouse jiggler, which will keep the screen basically open and unlocked so that the uh, screensaver never comes into effect. And this is typically used by law enforcement if they want to make sure that their suspect's computer never gets locked, so they have to get the password. If they grab them really quickly when they're on their computer, they'll usually have a device like this that they plug in, and then it just moves around and makes sure that the computer never locks. Now, this can be used for various other things. You can make an auto clicker. You can do all sorts of other great stuff, like maybe go through every time YouTube asks you if you're still listening. But in general, we're going to learn to use the DigiSpark microcontroller to move the mouse around a tiny, tiny little bit in order to make sure that screensaver never happens. And this can be modified in a variety of different ways. Now, to do this, you'll need a DigiSpark. And you can find the link to buy one in the Nullbyte article that is linked in the description. And if you get confused, you can also check that out as well. Now, you will also need to download and install Arduino IDE. But once you have this installed, then we can get started. To get started today building a mouse jiggler, we're going to take a look at an example that was originally posted on AirGap and written by James Franklin. And this is a really cool example because it basically shows uh, a one way that you can implement this where it's so subtle that the average person probably would never notice it. And it would keep a screen totally unlocked indefinitely, provided you were able to put this in the back of maybe a work computer or a, a desktop computer that uh, has a back that's maybe not visible, where this could just run for an extended period of time and just keep that computer always unlocked. Now, I'm also going to show you a slightly modified script. And this is where I took the original script and just made it so that it's super obvious when it's running. And this is something where if you adjust the randomness so that it happens a little bit irregularly, could really drive someone crazy if they were trying to just use a computer and suddenly their mouse is running all over the place at irregular intervals and doing surprising things. So of course, there's other ways of doing this. And I really like this example guide because it's super simple. So let's go ahead and follow this. Although you can also check out my modified script uh, and a separate guide on Nullbyte. Now, in order to actually get this to work, we're going to need to add a JSON link. And this JSON link is basically what will allow us to download all the board definitions. And here you can see that we can copy this right here. And in Arduino, we can go to Preferences and then see the additional board manager URL. And if we click here, there's a whole bunch of ones that I've already added. And you'll see the one that we're looking for is actually right here. You can just paste the one that you want to add. I'm going to put that right there. And it should then allow us to add the various boards that we want to work with. So here, if I go to Tools and then to the Board Manager, I should be able to, once it uploads, or sorry, once it updates all of the boards that we're going to be looking for, uh, the correct board, which is going to be the DigiSpark, as you saw selected there. So once it's done downloading the platform index, I can type Digi. And that should show me the Digistump AVR boards by Digistump. And here you can see the DigiSpark is what we're going to want to work with. You can click on Install. I already have it installed, so it just says Remove. But once this is installed, you should be able to click on Close. And then under Tools and in the Board section, you'll be able to select the correct board. Now, this board, as you can see here, is going to be the default one. And it also works a little bit differently. So uh, rather than a board where you would have this already plugged in, if you have it plugged in now, you're actually going to have to unplug it and then press the Upload button in order to send this. So let's go ahead and press Upload. And I'm going to plug this in. And this is the example script we're going to be working with. So you can find this on the Nullbyte article. And hopefully this works. Sometimes it takes more than one time of plugging it in to upload all the way. 
Here we go. Now you can see that the micronucleus is saying it's complete and the mouse has started to jump all over the place. So why is this happening? Well, let's take a look at the code. In this lightly modified example written by James Franklin, you can see that there is initially a lower cycle time and upper cycle time that's defined over here, whoa, at the top. Now, what this is doing is setting the shortest amount of time and the longest amount of time it'll take between random mouse movements. And you can set this super long if you want to keep this really subtle, or as I've done, really short if you want to make sure that it's working. Now, next you can see that uh, the original code is going to move the mouse one pixel in a certain direction up, down, uh, left, and right in a square. But I've chosen to amplify this, and now instead I have it at about 10 million. So it's moving really, really uh, in a kind of pronounced fashion, which allows me to make sure that it's actually working. And again, if I wanted to make this more of a prank, I could increase the amount of time between random mouse jumps so that it's running maybe every between 10 and uh, 10, 10 seconds and 10 minutes maybe, and just have it randomly going off and throwing someone off what they're trying to do something with their mouse. Especially if they were a gamer, this would probably be really frustrating and annoying. So as you can see, this is a quick way that we can start to use the DigiSpark to actually manipulate the mouse. Now I want to show the other example that was originally provided because I think it's really cool. And if I have it here, if you want to compare it line by line, it's pretty obvious that these, this code is extremely similar. The only difference being that we are defining a much longer time to make the mouse movement, and we're also only moving it a very small amount. So in order to try this out, we can ensure that we are still connected properly to the board and then upload the mouse jiggler and I'll have to plug it in again. All right, trying that again. I'm going to press upload and plug this in. There we go. Now, as you can see, we've updated this code and you don't see the mouse jumping all over the place. Now, even if I were to leave this in one position, it wouldn't really move because it's just moving in a very tiny circle and it's doing it between every 10 seconds and every 30 seconds. So this should be just enough to keep a station indefinitely unlocked so a hacker could come back when somebody wasn't there or just take advantage of a good moment and reliably know that this computer is going to be unlocked later just by leaving this little less than a dollar device plugged into the back. Using the DigiSpark as a mouse is an imperfect science. And while we made a pretty simple tool today, it's worth noting that as soon as we need to control this more precisely, for example, working with a screen resolution that is unknown, that's where things start to get really difficult. Now, aside from that, it is possible to do things like both inject keystrokes and use the mouse, so you can really get creative with these scripts, so I encourage you to do so, and please show me if you make any interesting ones, because I would love to see. Now, if you get confused or you need to pick up a DigiSpark board, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description, and if you have any ideas for future episodes, you can send me a message on Twitter at Cody Kinsey, because I'd love to hear from you. So that's all we have for today, and we'll see you next time.